Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! The following video will contain spoilers from the Legends of Tomorrow episode titled Failsafe. So, spoilers. If you don't want anything ruined for you, stop watching now. Hey guys, Dave here. I know I, I should got my hair fixed before I got on here, but yeah, I just want to look pretty. Anyway, <laughs> I know, I know, five pounds of makeup it wouldn't be enough. I know, I get it, but anyway. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I wanted to give you a quick little heads up. Uh, uh, thanks to my buddy in the DC Extended Universe Discussion Group pointing out my uh, little hiccup in my last uh, theory video about uh, the man in the metal mask. Uh, that was an error on my part from, from editing. I apparently uh, I didn't put the final part of the clip into it, uh, so uh, that was my bad. I didn't know that. I'll be more aware of it next time in the future. I was going to try to be all fancy and say, no, see, see, my theory's right. You see, see, you know, you know, everyone's talking about Jay, but, but my other idea, oh, 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 no one else is dropping that. I'm the only one right now, dibs. So, so the CW's trying to shut me up right now. No, they can't, they can't shut me down. They can't shut me down. Mm, no, no. But, uh, <laughs> no, that was my bad, so uh, no problem. Anyway, when last we left off, we've got Ray Palmer, Heat Wave, and Martin Stein captured and in the clutches of uh, Dr. Vostok, who's trying to recreate Firestorm for the Soviets. This is not looking good. Uh, so, what's, what's going on here? We pick up where the team is trying to now figure out the best way to break in to a Russian gulag that has never been known to have been broken into before. Meanwhile, while they're trying to come up with a plan for that, Rip takes Sarah, White Canary aside, and gives her a failsafe thing for the mission. The main thing is to try to get Stein out of there and destroy any evidence of creating a, nuclear, of a, a Soviet firestorm. But when all else fails, if there's no other way, then she has to kill Martin Stein. He shows her the future of Star City being overwhelmed by Soviet firestorms. And that's pretty darn frightening. So, while Ray and Rory, or Mick Rory, I should say, are trying to do their thing in prison, they're, they're an interesting odd couple. I mean, you've got one guy who's definitely rough, been inside of prisons, he knows how the things work there. And then you get Ray, who's the, the the positive guy, the, the the sunny side up, the you know the idealist, and they seem like a real odd couple, but especially when it comes to the things going on in the prison yard. But it's interesting because the two play off each other pretty well. I'll get back to that later. Meanwhile, while uh, Captain Cold, Rip, and Canary are trying to get some information on a guy who actually the uh, Russian mob knew about the Gulag and the ways in and out. Uh, Jax and Kendra are benched effectively because uh, Kendra's too much of a wild card uh, given her recent outbursts. Not to mention he doesn't want anywhere going near where Savage could be because you know not only is he not going to risk anything happening to her especially because she, she, she's the only one going to be able to kill Savage. But Jax has been too uh, temperamental lately so they don't want to do that. Plus I don't want him going in there because if Stein and Jax get together, then they can make Firestorm and next thing you know, the Soviets can really go for it. So having Stein there is something that they're going to be able to use to create it, but they don't know that he's a half of it yet. So while this is going on, uh, it's really interesting. And eventually, you know, Stein is going through uh, hallucinations uh, that even get to see a little cameo from Cisco in there it was kind of cool but Vostok is just an evil witch man I'm telling you and meanwhile uh, Jax is trying to help Stein out because of the connection they have they actually do the little arm scratch thing to say, give a message we're coming he does his best to hide it and it does work for a while but then Savage shows up and starts instead of interrogating him goes to interrogate Ray and Mick in front of them using electroshocks and then threatening to use other techniques and at one point Ray does something that Mick said he never would be which is a hero so he actually provokes the guard so he gets attacked instead of Mick and Mick's completely shocked by this he's never seen anything like that before so uh, 
they do make an interesting pair but eventually to spare Ray's life Stein does finally agree to start breaking down what's necessary he tries telling about the quantum splicer but keeps on saying there's things you're not getting you're just not getting and then Vostok sees the writing on his arm and then she figures out that he is actually one half of the Firestorm Matrix so knowing this they decide to speed things up a bit not good so the team is making their plans to go in there Snart definitely the one of the realists of the group he's he, he's interested in getting his guy back he definitely has the code of honor among the bad guys which is interesting and he just sees getting Mick his partner back that's it that was his main thing he does call Sarah on what he's doing and eventually though when it comes time to to try to go to get in there and take the shot Sarah gets talked out of doing that because it's not who she is anymore and that's an interesting seeing a whole humanity versus assassin part of her I mean yeah we know that Snart and Rory are bad guys but they have their own code they're doing this she's trying to fight the bloodlust as well as her assassin training and that's a real interesting parallel at one point also we got to the part where uh, where Stein's about to get in, you know put into and merge forcefully by Vostok I mean of course it's going to come down to an evil woman wanting you know, you know one half of the firestorm matrix inside of her uh, <laughs> but it's interesting because Cold's trying to get Rory out of there gives him his gun gets dressed up as the guard and everything and they're saying no look I'm here for you leave him Mick doesn't he's got Ray carrying him out of there I mean it's a cool moment to see that level of connecting there eventually Jack's managed to go in there uh, outrun some guards even getting t uh, nicked a little bit by a gun uh, shutting down the uh, breakers they finally figure that Kendra and Jax do have a part to play in this and they can help so they do manage to go in there to take care of that Kendra's doing her thing Savage senses Kendra and is trying to go after her but Rip ends up intercepting with Savage and he gets his watch back but it's just interesting seeing every level of coming back and seeing Savage become more and more just determined to make Rip's life hell it's kind of frightening eventually unfortunately it looks like Vostok does emerge with Stein and she's just blown side by side off here from during the, the prison raid and eventually Jax manages to reach Stein in the back of her mind and keep him she I and mean, he keeps her from blowing him away that was cool usually Stein's always been passive in that regard and only been able to say, suggest certain things he's never for only very few times they ever been able to actually be active in it so that was kind of cool but eventually he manages to stop her just in time for Jax to run up tag her and they separate so that was pretty darn cool uh, unfortunately Vostok starts to glow with a blue flame which we start thinking death storm but it looks like without the quantum splicer without Stein to stabilize the matrix she's going for a meltdown so here comes Rip and the jump ship the crew managed to get the hell out of Dodge Stavage gets blown the hell up every trace of the Firestorm Soviet project is gone now and the impenetrable gulag now gets taken off the map it looks like all is pretty well that ends well the future seems to be relatively intact the guys are flying through the time stream until they are attacked once again by that son of a bitch Kronos. Sorry for the language, but he's a prick. Not to mention they've said just about that same thing on the show, so no problem. They managed to do some evasive actions, uh, even uh, diverting some of his own weaponry against him, but unfortunately a missile tagged the Wave Rider, so it crashes out of time into Star City 2046. The place looks like it's a war zone. There are buildings on fire. The former Power Industries building is now Smoke Industries. And they encounter a green hooded archer. Sarah and Ray try to reason with him, but this is a dark skinned man who says, I don't know of any legends, and draws and fires on him. And that's where it to be to continue. Dun dun dun! Oh no, I mean, where uh, White Knights was a little on the slow side. It did pick up a bit in, uh, for uh, for failsafe, and just seeing how dedicated Rip is to 
preserving the future at any and all costs, including making the hard choices. I mean, people might give him a hard time that he may not seem like he knows what the heck he's doing, but he's a renegade time master who is doing everything he can to save the future. And, you know, this is a ragtag group. I mean, this is this is chemistry experimentation. This is pure experimental things with, the, with the, this crew. But it's fun, and it works, and it's a lot of stuff that you'd see in comics back in the day, too. So, in that regard, it's pretty faithful, and I enjoyed the episode. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Star City 2046 next week. We're looking at, like, a future Deathstroke. Is it going to be the actual same, or is someone taking up the mantle? We don't know. But it looks pretty freaking awesome. So, if you are an Arrow fan... Make sure to watch next week's episode of DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Star City 2046, because we're going to get to see what happens to Star City and some familiar faces in 30 years. So, what did you guys think of this episode? Please like, comment, subscribe, share, pass this bad boy around. And until next time, Dave signing off. Peace. Yum, yum.